Oh boy, with Suicide Squad having a record-breaking opening weekend, that means I have to do something Suicide Squad related on the site. And since I actually have a copy of the movie Suicide Squad, this will be the first time on the show that I'm talking about a movie that's currently in theaters. <laughs> Let's give this a watch. Who's been pulling with my carving knife? Well, you see, Larry was showing me how to make a boat, and, and uh, he said I had to have a sharp knife. So. I'm dead. <clears throat> uh, the guy, you're sitting in Sonny's place. You and Larry belong on the other side. Hey, Vince, how about squeezing the jig out of that thing? Huh? I slept through the entirety of that film. I've got nothing to say about it. And since I watch these movies live as the clips are happening, I need to find something else to watch. All right, what's on TV tonight? Let's take a look here at... Bushwhacked? That 1995 movie where Daniel Stern leads a ragtag team of Boy Scouts through the wilderness? What the hell is that getting shown on TV? No one saw that film. I don't care what the trailers said. Are those wimpy summer movies they want you to see leaving you in tears? Then get whacked. Who's whacked? Don't get whacked! Who's whacked? I remember 1995 very well, and I assure you that no one had bushwhacked fever. You know you're in for a good comedy when the TV spot barely shows clips of the actual film and is filled with people who most likely have not seen the movie. Yes, whack it! Ah, you guys need a good whack! Pack a legend! That's the wackiest thing I've ever heard. Not an impression of anybody in Bushwhacked. And given how much those people love whacking off jokes, They'll probably like Bushwhacked. This movie better not remind me of a better film I should be watching. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! What the hell else is on? Virtuosity? The Russell Crowe Denzel Washington movie? I guess I could watch that. with 1995 and their Saturday Night Fever references. Makes sense, since more people had Saturday Night Fever than Bushwhacked Fever. Daniel Stern stars as Max Grabelski, a delivery driver whose main job is to set up awkward jokes. What can I get you, bro? Two packs of Marlboros, some snowballs, and a jumbo coke. I feel like that bushwhacked stinger needs to come in every time a lame joke is said. Why not? It worked in the trailers. It sure made those jokes funny. Two packs of Marlboros, some snowballs, and a jumbo coke. Bushwhacked. <laughs> Great. Now the movie has a rim shot. Maybe if you didn't spend all your money on snacks, you could have paid to ride the bus. I think Max is the loose cannon of this agency. So dream on your own time. 10 a.m. guaranteed means 10 a.m. guaranteed. You're off the job, Max, as a delivery driver. Max makes a late night run to a millionaire's mansion. That is some painting of Eric Trump on the wall. But things at the house are not quite what they seem. Oh boy, ain't that a pickle? 
Enter John Polito to tell Max that he as well is a brother Seamus. Dude, when the FBI surrounds you, don't maintain your innocence by pointing a gun at them. This is the part where he goes through the rest of the movie with a broken back. So, the owner of the house is dead, and Max has been set up to take the blame. And they even got the young agent from The Fugitive to track him down. Okay, so... Here's the plot so far. Max is a delivery driver who delivers packages to a millionaire named Reinhardt Bragdon, and the packages are filled with money that Reinhardt was supposed to destroy, and now the FBI thinks that Max killed Reinhardt to steal the money, so Max has to go into the woods to a place named Devil's Peak, which is where another package is being delivered to Reinhardt. Ragtag team of Boy Scouts! Speaking of, here's our little tykes who are busy rock climbing. We're gonna make it! We're gonna make it! Hey! Can I play too? Oh, they weren't really rock climbing. They were just crawling on the ground for no reason whatsoever! <laughs> God, these fucking kids are annoying, but at least they're not trying to give me a guide to the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> whoa oh that's a girl. Ranger Scouts are for guys. Yeah, guys in aprons. I relax, bros. At least she's not trying to be a Ghostbuster. Too far. Max has got to steal a car quick. He knows there's a shit joke right around the corner. I gotta make a dookie. Gotta make a dookie! The kid's scout leader is Erickson, a real hard ass. I mean, look at him. He'll be terrible at teaching the kids proper knife training. And he sure does hate it when someone parks in the handicapped spot. Hey, Sergeant Doofus, did you paste that note to my window? That's right, cupcake. It's a little lesson in common decency. <laughs> well, at least Max wasn't the one driving with a knife up to his own throat. Once again, Max does what any sane person would do. He super glues the man's hands to the steering wheel. That isn't very nice at all. He could seriously injure that man. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> While driving Erickson's vehicle, Max is mistaken for the scout leader. And here we have our movie. Here you go, kids. Scream at him and tug on his shirt like you're a bunch of little cannibals. Who in their right mind would believe Max is a scout leader? Hey, can you tell us about the time you stole the beginning? Yeah! Come on, please. tell us. Come on. The time I what? Climb Mount Everest. Come on, tell us, please. Everest? Well... It was a bitch! <laughs> okay, I won't use the bushwhack stinger for that one. That was actually quite funny. Maybe the movie will start having actual jokes and not just mugging. That a man of your achievement has taken the time for the youth of America. <laughs> and there it is again. It's that period in the 90s where you could still be a smoker in movies, so long as more often than not, you get distracted and don't actually light it. He somehow gets lost after walking five feet into the woods while on a trail, and somehow everyone still believes he's a hard-ass scout leader. How come your nickname's Spider? Because I once killed a kid who called me Spider one time too many! If this movie doesn't end with Daniel Stern murdering children, it's not going to be worth it. Oh, and he didn't really shoot Erickson in the head. I was just fooling. But what is serious is this insect attack. Ah! Ah, help me! Ah! 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 They're eating me alive! I'm really glad there's no overacting going on in this film. This is our main hero, a man who thinks you're supposed to chug bug repellent when handed to you. But about that devil's peak he's supposed to get to. It says class six. That means only the most experienced climbers. How tough could it be? It's this far! The man doesn't know how maps work! 
And who are these people behind him? Hey, movie crew, you're in the shot. John Polito comes back because he knows they got to be filming Miller's Crossing around here somewhere. It's not every day you get to redo a scene from The Fugitive while standing next to an actor from The Fugitive. Hmm, searching for a possible murder while on a trail through the wilderness? I should be watching Shoot to Kill. And, what? Well, he can still see them? Have they only walked ten feet this entire time? That's still plenty of space for Max to do something that could get them all killed. Come on, tough guy, put him up! <laughs> eh, what's the worst that could happen? And then he got bear-raped and spent the rest of the movie tracking down Tom Hardy. Bushwhack took a seriously dark turn, but it did get much more beautifully shot. Now do they know he's a fake? I must say that was an awesome demonstration of how to handle a bear attack. But let's ignore when he was playboxing a cub. Thankfully, though, they all respect each other. What is that? We run and dance and sing and play? My mom kind of wrote the words. Because she's a huge fan of Salute Your Shorts? Mmm, nothing like a little mountain top rain. Oh, that's a ticket. A little spritz of cool, clean mountain rain. Shake your lizard, let it drain! Move your hips and spell your name! Who's Ah, uh, good. Max will lose the FBI by threatening to toss the Shankara stones. Don't worry, lady. Strong wood. Just make them run across the bridge. I as well want to see him get eaten by alligators. How the fuck is Max so hard to catch? What the hell, FBI? And no news. No. No news. There's no news. Unless it's good news. But we have no news, so... <laughs> Not so easy with that Tommy Lee Jones there, is it? They're all looking for pine cones and wait, that's not a pine cone. He doesn't know what beehives are. No, no, you're lying. No one has bushwhack fever. But I guess the movie is due for its second laugh. What are you working on? It's a crystal diode receiver. Oh, yes. And that is a beauty. That's the toolbox. <laughs> All right, that was good, too. But I still don't have bushwhacked fever, probably because something really trite and sitcom is going to happen. Could you tell us about the birds and the bees? Yeah. Spiders, yeah. sir. <laughs> Case in point, Max gives the kids the sex talk. Oh, that's how Daddy likes it. <laughs> Everybody start your engines. Ah, <laughs> I've now seen Daniel Stern's cum face. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Just whack it. There will be no whacking in this movie. In case you can't remember what led him into this mess, he gives the kids a hypothetical question in which he tells his story of delivering secret packages to the millionaire, in which the kids tell him that that's naive and stupid. If only they were there during the pitch meeting for Bushwhacked. Soon enough, they figure out Max isn't really the scout leader. Fucking no shit! Dumbest scouts ever! This must be very scary for them. Spider? His name's not Spider, it, it's Mad Max Grabelski. Okay, I remember Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome being too kid-friendly, but this is ridiculous. Thank God they know how to release smoke signals, though. Oh, what did they say? Belp. Belp. Belp? That's the only joke you got? Belp? That's the wackiest thing I've ever heard. Get out! Fuck off with that! The kids hatch a plan to knock him out with, uh, does it matter what? That'll kill him. That is good. <laughs> well, that got me too. 
And of course it's gonna get followed with a ball joke. He treated me for cryptorchidism. Understand his left testicle. Bushwhacked. Once he passes out, they want to burn him at the fucking stake. But wait, Blank Man's arch nemesis is a bad guy? I'm fucking shocked. This was actor Brad Sullivan's last movie, and he spent it fucking a tree. Oh uh, hey, Reinhardt wasn't dead after all. I guess when he's not overseeing 8mm snuff films for millionaires, he's framing Daniel Stern. But Reinhardt didn't count on stupidity. Fire! This is almost like getting second base. Thank you. That joke was so dumb, Daniel Stern just dived off a fucking cliff. I'm now a full hour into this movie. I would quit watching it, but unfortunately, being only an hour in, I can't properly determine whether or not I like the movie. Topical. All they gotta do is save Max and take care of the bad guys. How the hell does this have a half hour left? They almost go over a waterfall, but are saved before they get Emperor's new groove fever. To pretend they're dead, they toss their bags into the water, which somehow these guys can see from the helicopter. It's all riveting, let me assure you! Hey! It works! Yeah. It works! <laughs> now what? Okay, fine. Let's watch them run around in the rain. I guess it should go on a little longer. After all, they do need to get some bonding time in. You're a scout leader. You are still going to be our scout leader, right? Oh, you mean the guy who almost got you killed by a bear? Yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, and Erickson is still fucking a tree. They're almost a Devil's Peak, which they still have to climb. And if someone falls off of this cliff, I know exactly what's going to happen. Why did you do that? Why? I as well blame God for this movie. Look, here's an idea. Maybe leave the kids behind while you climb Devil's Peak to take on the bad guys. Then again, I always wanted to see Cliffhanger crossed with Troop Beverly Hills. I honestly don't see why he's so scared to climb this giant rock. I mean, one of the kids is young Indiana Jones. Then again, on the downside, he was also young Nixon. Luckily, they reach the top, where the villains are doing what all villains do, counting money and holding the kid's mom hostage. Sure, Erickson eventually does come back to save them from FBI Polito. No, Max, don't go after the villains. Why not send the guy who climbs trees and catches fish in his sleep? Or just keep shoving pine cones up Polito's ass. Well, Max survived so far. Might as well chase after Reinhardt. It's not like something like this will happen. Another funny part of the movie. That kid is dead! Okay, okay, the movie isn't actually gonna kill a kid. Oh boy, I sure hope he continues to be their scout leader after this. You kids may think you like Max now, but you haven't seen A Christmas Story 2 yet. With Reinhardt busted, naturally the kids get some special badges in their ceremony. As for Max... When you took these kids on an overnight, you broke every rule in the book. Um, yeah. <laughs> but when they got into trouble, you demonstrated the kind of courage and honor that are the cornerstones of the Ranger Scouts. And who was it who put him in trouble to begin with? So, no joke, they actually make Max an official scout leader, despite him not knowing jack shit. Hey, you hear that, guys? Yeah. I get to take you on another overnight. Yeah. Not just your kids. Yeah, that'll be great. Huh? All the kids. <laughs> what? Ah! 
So let this be a lesson to you. If you almost kill a kid when crossing a bridge that you're threatening to cut down, and if you point a gun at the troop in your sleep and let them crawl on your back as they all crawl over a canyon, you too can be an official scout leader. This movie earns one badge, a badge in bullshit! Bushwhacked came and went at the box office, earning only $7 million, and if something about Stern's character seems familiar, at one point this movie was pitched as a spin-off of Home Alone, with Stern starring as his Marv character. Why not? It actually would have been interesting seeing a more humanized version of Marv, despite the weak script. It's sad that this was a starring vehicle for Daniel Stern, as movies like Breaking Away and City Slickers do a far better job of showing his talent as a comedic and serious actor. Bushwhacked is the kind of movie where the filmmakers know it's a bad script, so they hire an actor to mug and overact their way through it in the hopes they can milk some laughs. And there you have my Suicide Squad tie-in episode. <laughs> I should have stayed asleep forever. Okay. Oh, very.